we approach the Australian Grand Prix and the start of the 2019 Formula One season, we're going to squeeze in one more chat about front wings. I know you love it. You all love it. And JBL, who's with me today, loves it as well. But we're going to talk about two opposite ends of the spectrum and try to illustrate why they're so different and how the teams have got different options about how they go about interpreting the new 2019 rules. But Jake, on the screen right now, we've got Mercedes. This is the updated version that we had at the second test. So as you've explained in detail before, yeah. uh, the end plate in particular is different. And it was the first sign really of Mercedes perhaps going more towards what we would consider a conventional approach compared to what we had before. But what we're going to do this time is actually show where the airflow goes and yeah. try to explain all the things that you've had to talk about up to now and basically wave your hand around to explain <laughs> what things are doing. We're going to bring in some graphics from our fantastic Motorsport Studios animation team to properly explain all the things you've been talking about for the last few weeks. So here it is, a Formula One front wing showing what the airflow is doing, how many different functions all the parts of the wing are achieving. It's not purely about downforce, as we've said at length in recent weeks, JBL, but over to you. Talk us through what all these various lines and different colours are and what each part of the wing is effectively doing. OK, cool. So let's start with the purple lines here, they're just passing over the wing elements. Um, you can see some of them tucking in in between the elements, some of them passing over the top and going towards either the centre of the car or coming outboard. Um, so this is the main, especially in the centre section here, this is the main point at which the most amount of downforce is created. Um, so these wings need to be sort of interconnected, be able to keep the airflow attached and not allow it to separate too much so that it can just facilitate that a little bit better. Then we move outboard and we've got these strakes under here and what these do is these start to create little vortices so they're almost like little baby tornadoes almost. Um, so they propagate from here. In previous seasons we used to have a big massive vortex tunnel that was able to do that but we don't have that this year. Teams have to do a lot more with a lot less. So they're trying to do that, it's just creating a sort of low pressure zone and just trying to activate this outboard section of the wing a little bit more and just bring a little bit more from it but also uses the end plate as well to drive flow outside and that's what you can see from the blue lines here it's just the su almost subtle outwashing of flow here it's just slowly moving outside and that's sort of being bound by the vortices created at this foot plate and at the top as well so, uh, so this is what we call a tip vortex and it's just emanating from this point here um, you can see the cut out here that that's what a number of teams have done tried to employ that cut out to bring it in a little bit earlier and then so what does that achieve by having by having the cut out there and like you say bringing in that that vortex earlier what is that achieving so that means that teams can then use the flow that's coming off of the front wing. Um, so these which, purple lines yeah, here. So that sort of spills outwards and it sort of brings it out a little bit earlier. If you do it too late, then you kind of risk getting the tyre involved and all of the tyre weight you're trying to stop being created. That's the whole point of the outwash, just cut the amount of tyre weight being produced. Mm. Um, you would get that back and it just wouldn't be as effective. So that's kind of the idea there. And then the foot plate again, that's just rolling up a vortex as you can see and it's just being carried out board um, along with that flow there. So, and then finally the net result is this green line here which is just air going around the tyre and it's just sort of penning in that wake that's being shared by the tyre as it, as it rotates. It creates this massive mass of turbulent air so it's essentially trying to stop that, stop the effect, uh, the negative effect on the barge boards further down the car which then has a negative effect on the floor. So the front wing is trying to set all of this up, trying to make sure that the rest of the car can work as effectively as possible. And the teams have had a lot of tools taken away here, as you mentioned, haven't they? So where this is quite straightforward in this part now, there was a lot more going on there, and it would have been probably more colours and more mini tornadoes, as you called it before. <laughs> so this is really an example of what the rules were intended to do, was to reduce as much of this as possible, weren't they? Yeah, definitely. But you can see, still see that teams are trying to use all of the tiny little bits of furniture to get a little bit back. And you can see they're using the little tyre temperature sensor here and also the uh, little flap adjuster there just to try and boost that a little bit more because, as we say, they've not got a lot of tools to be able to do that with. So, yeah, they're just trying to make the most of what they've got on offer. So, as we said, that's effectively what the rules intended in terms of a front wing design really. The team's obviously looking for the little tricks that they can but this is a relatively conventional wing that Mercedes have come up with. Now we're going to go to the other end and what we've already discussed at length is probably a much more aggressive or unconventional wing and that's what we've seen on the Alfa Romeo. 
And there's a completely different design going on here, and we're going to get into that one now. Now, it's immediately obvious that there are different things going on here, that the lines are in different places, the colours are moving in different ways to what we saw before. Over to you, JBL. I mean, did you want to start on the inside or the outside? I can start on the inside, um, because we didn't get this view on the Mercedes, but it will still be doing the same thing using these uh, inboard pieces here. It's just creating this vortex here that's rolling inside. Uh, this and is that's fed to the barge boards, isn't it, which you can see in the background? Yeah, so that's essentially channeled down and fired at this portion of the car here. It's known as the Y250 Vortex because it's 250 millimetres away from the centre line of the car. Um, but then moving in board, you can see the purple lines here. Um, there's a little extra gurney flap along the top here, and you can just see that airflow jump over a little bit. Just It's essentially trying to create a little bit more downforce. That's why they've got this big element here because they're not creating as much with this portion here. As you can see, it's very, very low angle of attack. The airflow is, is still going to be doing the same on the Mercedes, of course, but this just illustrates better how it's passing through each of the individual slot gaps. Um, and they've given up a slot gap here, effectively, haven't they? Yeah, definitely. So what they're going to do there is risk having a little bit more airflow separation. Um, but the net result of that is they're getting more downforce out of that portion of the wing. And then you can see the blue passing under the side of the, of the wing here. That's the suction surface. So that's where your low pressure is and that's what you need to be creating downforce. But the most interesting point is on this side of here, closer to, closer to you. Um, this green portion here, this is very aggressively angled, isn't it, to try and drive more airflow out around the car. And it's the same effect as, as I've described before, but Alfred just trying to ensure that it's able to do that in a lot more, uh, with a lot more strength. Um, Again, the end plate is still going to be creating those vortices, but it's just interesting to see here to illustrate how much more Alfa Romeo are trying to aggressively pursue this outwash theory, essentially. So the split really is coming here, isn't it? Where this portion ends, and then we've got, as you said, the very shallow part, and they're trying to create a gap, effectively, to force what we've turned into the green lines to go in that gap between the end plate and the, the front wheel. So that's the Mercedes, because it has basically front wing furniture in this portion yeah. can't achieve the same effect in the same way, can it? No, it's taken very two different, very different philosophies to it. Um, it does look like on the face of it that you risk just having a massive barrage of air going towards the, the front tyre. But obviously, you know, you're not going to go ahead and design something like that. And Alfa Romeo have been very, very clever in using the space available to them and thinking, OK, maybe we don't have to create a whole wing that fits the entire bounding box. We can sort of take a few liberties with it, uh, try and maximise the space here that they can use for downforce and then use that particular sculpting, if you like, to just drive airflow out and then ensure the rest of the car is as effective as possible.